Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on static electricity. The topic of this video is Coulomb's Law, and here's what we wish to learn today. What's the equation that describes the electric force between two charged objects, and how can we use this equation to solve physics word problems? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed charge interactions. If you need to review, you'll find a link to it in the description section below. We discussed three types of charge interactions in that video. First, oppositely charged objects will attract one another. Second, like charged objects will repel one another. And third, any neutral and charged object will interact so as to attract one another as well. These three interactions result in forces that we call non-contact forces because they occur even when the two objects are not touching one another over some distance of separation. We sometimes refer to them as actions at a distance. These hanging balloons provide examples of an action at a distance. An action at a distance always results in two forces, one on each of the interacting objects. We call these forces electric forces, and like any force, they're subject to all the rules that apply to forces, like the idea that they're vectors and they have a magnitude and direction. Their magnitude is expressed in units of newtons. They can be represented on free body diagrams by vector arrows, and and they're subject to all of Newton's laws of motion. The magnitude of the electric force is dependent upon three variables, the, the amount of charge on one of the object, the amount of charge on the other object, and the separation distance between the two objects. We measure the separation distance not from their nearest edges, but from the centers of the two objects. Coulomb's law expresses the relationship between the electric force and the variables that affect it. The law can be stated like this. The electric force between two charged objects is directly proportional to the product of their charges and inversely proportional to the separation distance. This proportionality statement can be expressed like this. Here, Q represents the quantity of charge on object A and object B, and D represents the separation distance, which is measured between the two object's centers. If I wish to express this by an equation, I need to use a proportionality constant, K. It can be written like this, where K is sometimes referred to as the Coulomb's Law constant. Its value is 9.0 times 10 to the 9th newtons times meter squared per Coulomb squared. Because of these units, when I use this K value to solve for electric force, I have to use Q in units of coulombs and D in units of meters. In a physics course, there are typically two ways we use Coulomb's law. One way is to think about how a change in one of the variables would affect the electric force. For instance, the change in one of the Q values. Here we have two balloons with charges QA and QB. If we double one of the charges, that would double the force. If we double both the charges, well, that would quadruple the force. This is because electric force is directly proportional to the product of the charges. But it's also inversely proportional to the distance of separation squared. So if we start with two balloons that are two units of distance apart, and then we separate them by four units, we've increased the D value. That should decrease the F value. In fact, if you double the distance, you should decrease the F value by 2 squared. You would then have one-fourth of the force. This idea of thinking proportionally about the equation will be used much more intensely in the next video. The second way that Coulomb's Law is often used is as an algebraic recipe for solving for an unknown in a physics word problem. Here's the equation. You'll note that there are four variables in it. If you know the value of any three, you can solve for the fourth variable. One caution you'll have to take as you solve such problems is that the value of Q is seldom given in units of Coulomb's. So you'll have to use the above conversion information in order to convert from other units to coulombs, for instance, from microcoulombs to coulombs or nanocoulombs to coulombs. Here's a typical problem. In order to solve this problem or any problem in physics, it's always wise to follow 
five steps. The first step is to read the problem and to diagram it in order to develop a mental picture. The second step is identify known values of the variables in the equation. The third step is identify the unknown variable. You should express these variable values in the unknown using the symbols of the equation. For instance, you might say QA equal negative 6.25 microcoulombs. Then select a formula for use, maybe even rearrange it to get the unknown variable by itself. Finally, substitute known values into the equation and solve for the unknown variable. Here's my first example problem. I'm going to read and then diagram the situation. Two balloons are charged with an identical amount of charge of negative 6.25 microcoulombs. They're held a distance of 61.7 centimeters apart. Determine the magnitude of the force. So my mental picture is I have two balloons. I know the QA and QB value of the balloons and the separation distance and I'm looking for my F electrical. I'm going to record what I know in this problem. I know QA is the same as QB. It states an identical amount of charge. And I know the value is negative 6.25 microcoulombs. But you'll note I've left out the negative because it only is going to complicate matters. I'm not interested in anything other than the magnitude of this force and having the sign of the charge isn't going to help me to do that. I also know that D is equal to 61.7 centimeters. You'll note that I've done conversions from coulombs to microcoulombs and from centimeters to meters. I'm looking for the F electrical and here's my equation. I'm ready to go. I write the equation down and then I make substitutions of QA, QB, and D into this equation. I use units of coulombs and meters because that's the units used on the value of K. Here's my substitutions. Now I pull out my calculator, one I'm comfortable with, that I know how to use, and I carry out the completion of this problem on my calculator. Carefully, I enter numbers in the proper operations and I get 0.923 newtons as my value for F electrical. In example problem two, I have two balloons with the same amount of charge, and I know the force of repulsion between them, 0.0648 newtons, and this occurs when they're 28.2 centimeters apart. So my mental picture is that I have two balloons, I know the force, I know the distance, and I know that Q is equal to Q, QA is equal to QB, but I don't know what the value is. It's what I'm looking for. So here's what I know. I know F electrical, I know D. D is given in centimeters, and since K value in Coulomb's law has meters in it, it's important to divide by 100 and get the D in units of meters. I'm looking for QA and QB. Now here's my equation, and it's great for solving for F electrical, but I want to solve for Q. So I'm going to do some algebra. Two steps, it goes like this. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by D squared to get the D squared out of the denominator on the right side. Then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by K. That will isolate QA and QB by itself on one side of the equation, and it looks like that. Now I'm looking to solve for Q. A and QB. So here's the equation, but since they're the same Q, I'm just going to call them Q. In other words, Q squared is equal to F electrical times D squared divided by K. I'm going to now take values of F electrical of K and D squared and substitute it into this equation. Then I'm going to use a calculator I'm comfortable with to find out what Q squared is equal to. I'm going to do all that mess on my calculator comes out to be 5.725 times 10 to the negative 13th coulomb squared. Now that's Q squared. I want to solve for Q. So if I take the square root of both sides, the left side becomes Q, and the right side becomes the square root of 5.725 times 10 to the negative 13th. Do that square root on your calculator. You get 7.57 times 10 to the negative 7th coulombs for the value of Q. In example problem three, I know the values of QA and QB, they're stated for me, and I know the force that acts between these two charges. I'm looking to calculate the separation distance between these two charges. So my mental picture is I have two objects, maybe balloons. I know their Q values. I know the F. I'm looking to calculate the D. Here's my known values. I know QA, it's given in microcoulombs, and QB, also in microcoulombs. I want to get it to coulombs, so I'm going to divide these microcoulomb values by 10 to the 6th 
to get the Coulomb value. I also know the force. Notice how I write those down. Now I'm looking to calculate the D, the separation distance, and here's my formula. Now the formula is pretty good for solving for F electrical, but as written, it's not real good for solving for D. So two steps of algebra. The first step is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by D squared. That gets D squared out of the denominator. It would show up on the left as D squared times F electrical. Then I divide both sides of the equation by F electrical. That gets D squared isolated by itself. And here's the result. Now I'm solving for D. So I really would like to take the square root of both sides of this equation. The square root of d squared is d, and that would be equal to the square root of all that other stuff. Now I'm going to take values of qa, qb, and f and substitute it in to the formula. Then I'm going to pull out my calculator and find out what all this mess is here. Find a calculator you're comfortable with. All that mess on the right side of the equation is 0 0.4036 blah blah blah. D is equal to the square root of that. So on my calculator, I take the square root of 0 0.4036, blah, 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 the number on my calculator, and I get 0 0.635, and the units would be meters. Now one thing to make a note of is that when I put in values for QA and QB, I didn't put in the plus and the minus sign. You really don't need to, and you really shouldn't either, because Q stands for the quantity of charge, and not, has nothing to do with the type. The plus and minus tells you it's charged positively or negatively, and the Q is just how much. So ignore the plus and the minus when you're working with Coulomb's Law equation. So at this time in every video, I would like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Here's your action plan. All four of these resources can be found on our website. Links to each one are in the description section of this video. Any one of these resources would be great follow-ups to this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thanks for watching.